so welcome back uh, we were discussing the chapter rotational dynamics and static equilibrium and as of now we have discussed two topics in this chapter the first topic that we discussed was torque second topic we explored that what is the relation between the torque and the angular acceleration and the link to both of these two videos is attached in the description you can watch it out from there now today we'll start with a new topic zero torque and static equilibrium so let's start the video now uh, to understand zero torque and static equilibrium consider this situation here you can see uh, parent are supporting the child on a plank this plank is a lightweight plank that means you can neglect the weight of the plank right now uh, for this uh, plank to be in equilibrium you can see that uh, the parent should exert a force equal to the weight of the child that means what we can say here is that f1 plus f2 this should be equals to mg this is what we can say now but this condition does not always ensures that the plank will remain in static equilibrium consider the situation suppose uh, the uh, this the parent on the right side releases the plank and the parent on the left side increases the force f2 to equals to mg now still the net force are balanced but uh, the the plank will going to rotate in clockwise direction and from this practical example we observe that uh, for the system to be in static equilibrium two conditions should be satisfied first condition we have that the net force on the system what is system here system is the plank so net force net force on the system should be equals to zero also the net torque on the system should be equals to zero and torque we represent it with tau like this so net torque should also be equals to zero right so if i conclude here the conditions of static equilibrium this is very important and this will be using throughout this chapter condition for static equilibrium right so first condition we have the net force on the system this should be equals to zero and if there uh, there are forces in the x in the uh, and in the y direction so this can also be written as that the net force in the x direction it should be equals to zero also the net force in the y direction should be equals to zero so this is one in the same thing next condition which is very important that is the net torque on the system should be equals to zero so these are the two and the only two conditions uh, for the system to be in static equilibrium now uh, let's apply these conditions uh, in this example that we have taken now let's apply these uh, two condition over this example now uh, first condition is that the net force acting on the system should be zero to do so we should first specify the direction that is upward direction we always take positive and uh, this is a positive y direction this is a positive x direction that we have shown already right so uh, what we can write here is that f1 plus f2 this is along the positive y now mg is downwards so we should take negative sign minus mg this is the net force this should be equals to zero this is the first condition we have used second condition is that net torque should be zero now to find the torque net torque we have to choose the axis of rotation now you are free to choose any point on the plank to be the axis of rotation it's up to you but it's better to choose a point on one of the unknown force because if you choose suppose if you choose this point this this point to be your axis of rotation so the torque of this force uh, the torque due to this force f1 will be zero 
and this will simplify the calculation to find the unknowns so it's better to take a point where one uh, of the force is unknown force so I'm choosing this point to be the axis of rotation right so uh, the torque due to force F1 this will be 0 and the torque due to force F2 this would be equals to now we always take anti-clockwise uh, rotation to be positive so F2 into this would be L and torque due to the this mg force this would be mg into 3L by 4 and it should be negative because it is in the clockwise direction right so the net force would be this is 0 so no need to write this is F2 into L and this is minus mg into uh, 3L by 4 now equate this to be 0 from here we can find this unknown force F2 right so if you solve it for F2 from here you'll get that F2 to be equals to 3 by 4 mg so we have obtained this unknown force F2 that the parent this parent second this right side parent should apply now if you uh, plug this F2 in the first equation you can find F1 so if you solve it for F1 after plugging as F2 as 3 by 4 mg you'll get F1 to be 1 by 4 mg right now these two forces support the plank and keep it from rotating now as you might expect that force near uh, near to the child is greater this the magnitude of this force is more and the magnitude of this force is less that you can see here also that we have obtained right now one question for you here we have taken uh, this to be our axis of rotation now uh, if you take this point this point to be your axis of rotation then find the unknowns f1 and f2 you can uh, use the two conditions that we have mentioned earlier and then solve uh, the two equations and you'll get the same result so if you take this point to be the axis of rotation then also you'll get the same result but you have to do on your own you have to verify that and we're going to move forward now now uh, we'll take a couple of more examples based on static equilibrium now here we have this 5 meter long uh, board diving board of negligible mass so you can neglect the mass of this board now it is supported by two pillars this is the first pillar this is the second pillar right now uh, the distance between these two pillars is this distance d is given to be 1.50 meter right now our task is to find the forces exerted by the pillow when a 90 kg diver stands at far end of the board that means the mass of the diver is given to be 90 kilogram and then we are asked to find the force so let the force exerted by the first pillar is F1 let the force exerted by the second pillar onto the board is F2 so we have to find these F1 and F2 now since the uh, the diving board is in static equilibrium now since the uh, diving board is in static equilibrium we can use uh, the two conditions that we mentioned earlier to find these two unknowns so uh, I'm using the first equation and also we should specify that this is the positive direction we have taken positive y and this is the positive x now uh, to write the first equation that net force in the uh, vertical direction should be equal to 0 I can write that f1 plus f2 minus mg it should be equals to 0 and from here we can write that f1 plus f2 is equals to mg and this is the first equation we have obtained now to write the second one we can use the second condition that the net torque should be 0 now to write the net torque we have to choose the axis of rotation and you are free to choose any point to be your axis of rotation but as mentioned earlier you should choose a point where one of the unknown uh, the torque due to one of the unknown force goes to zero so I am choosing this point to be the axis of rotation so the net torque this will be equals to 
Now torque due to this force F1 will be zero because it passes through the axis. Now the torque due to this force F2, this would be F2 multiplied with the distance T. And it makes, uh, this rotation is counterclockwise. So we should take a positive sign. Next, this mg force creates a clockwise torque. So you should take a negative mg into capital L. And this, this is a net torque. This should be equals to zero. Now from here, if you rearrange, you'll get that F2. This should be equals to mg into L by D. This is the force F2. Now just plug the values. mg mass is given to be 90. G is 9.81. L by D, L is 5, D is 1.5. Solve this, you'll get this to be 2940 Newton. Now, if you plug this F2 here in the first equation, you know the value of mg. mg is what? If you solve for mg, mg is 883 Newton. Right? So you have mg, you have F2, you can solve it for F1 from here. You'll get F1 to be equals to. Uh, negative 2060 Newton now here we have we can see couple of uh, observations first ob observation is that you have obtained this force F1 to be negative so what this negative sign denotes that initial we have taken that the direction of F1 is upward but since the value obtained to be as negative actually this F1 is is in the downward direction like this This is F1 and F2 is 2940. So you should increase the length of this vector like this. It should be greater than F1, right? And the direction will be upward because you have obtained to be a positive value. Next important observation that many people don't see here is that if you see just the magnitude of F1 and F2, if you see F1, F just I'm taking the magnitude so this would this is 2060 and if you take F2 this is 2940 now if you compare it with the uh, with the weight of the diver this is 883 Newton now, if you compare this force is approximately 2.33 times the value of mg and this force is 3.33 times the value of mg that is the force exerted by the two pillar is considerably large than the diver's weight. Now this observation is not unusual. In fact, it is the common for the forces in structures such as bridges, building or human body to be much greater than the weight it supports. Now this is the important observation that we uh, see while designing the bridges or any building right now we can move forward now to this point uh, we have ignored the mass of the plank now what would happen if we uh, consider that the mass is not massless then what will uh, the results will be there we'll discuss those things now now in this example uh, we'll consider the mass of the plank now here you can see that a cat walks along a plank of mass capital M this capital M is given to be uh, 6.00 kilogram right now the plank is supported by two show horse that you can see here show horse A show horse B now the center of mass of the plank is at a distance D1 and this D1 is given to be 0 0.850 meter right now uh, we need to find that when the cat is at a distance d2 and this d2 is given to be 1.11 meter to the right of the show horse b the plank just begins to tip and our task is to find that what is the mass of the cat this mass is what we need to find okay so we can use the same two equations that we considered earlier now here at this situation the plank uh, at point A is just begins to tip just begins to tip that means the the normal force exerted on the plank A due to the whole show horse uh, should be equals to zero this FA should be equals to zero 
now uh, we can use the this equation that the net torque acting on the system basically the plank this is equals to zero now to write the net torque we have to choose the axis of rotation it's better if you choose this point to be your axis of rotation right now just write uh, now this force if a is already zero so no need to take the torque due to this force now this uh, force mg this will create a anti-clockwise torque so mg into d1 and this force small mg this creates a, a clockwise torque so minus mg into d2 and this should be equals to zero now, if you rearrange for m from here this m would be equals to capital m times d1 divided by d2 now just plug the values we have the capital m we have d1 d2 you'll solve this you'll get this value to be 4.59 kilogram so this is the mass of the cat right now here you can see that this force fb this also creates zero torque because it passes through the axis of rotation we can also find the magnitude of this force fb this fb would be equal to small mg plus capital mg and that would be equals to approximately 104 newton so these are the required results when we consider the plank to be not massless right now let's move forward now let's discuss the real world physics now you might have observed that uh, while sudden braking the uh, the vehicle goes into a nose down position during braking that you can see here the front portion of the car goes down now this is due to the fact that when the brakes are applied the frictional forces uh, with the road tends to make it rotate uh, clockwise since but this is countered by a large normal force onto the front tires which exerts a torque into a counterclockwise sense and this results the vehicle goes uh, down from the front end and for this reason only uh, many car manufacturers uses the uh, the disc brake for the front wheels and the less powerful drum brake for the real wheels now, as of now we have taken examples that uh, points forces either directly upwards or directly downwards we will now consider examples where forces may have both vertical and horizontal components so let's discuss a um, uh, couple of more problems and then uh, we're going to end this video now uh, we'll be considering a situation where forces have both the vertical and the horizontal component like here we have this uh, lamp and this is the light curved road which is attached to the bolt at this point and here it is connected with a wire now uh, this road is a lightweight and the lamp has a mass m so the gravity force would be acting like this now at this point where it is connected with the uh, with the bolt now the bolt applies the force f onto the onto this curved road which have the x and the y component that you can see here also we have this tension force t in the wire this is the scenario here now if the system is in equilibrium system means that if this uh, lamp is in equilibrium then we are asked to uh, find the tension force and the force f basically you have to design the the lamp designing the lamp means just to find the unknowns this force f how much tension force t is required according to that we'll choose a wire that can withstand this much of tension and uh, according to this force f we can choose the bolt which can apply this much force f onto the lamp so we have we have to basically we have to design the uh, the, the lamp for the given data now we're going to use the same conditions that we mentioned in the starting of the video that is net force zero and the net torque also zero so first we'll be using the zero torque uh, condition zero net torque condition so net torque onto the system is equals to zero now for that we have to choose the axis of rotation so it's better if we choose this point to be our axis of rotation because because here at this point the the torque due to this force f goes to zero right so uh, now this tension force t makes the torque in the in the counterclockwise sense so t multiplied with uh, this distance is v 
then minus mg multiplied with h. Why we have taken this minus? Because it is the torque is clockwise. This is equals to zero. Now, if you rearrange for t from here, t would be equals to mg into h by v. Now, did you notice one thing? That the tension force increased if the wire is connected closer to the bottom of the road. That means if this distance v, if this v distance is decreased, if this v is decreased, the tension force will going to increase. This we can observe from here. So we have obtained the expression for the tension force T. Now next to find uh, the x and the y component, this fx and fy, we can use the net force equals to zero. So we'll be using the net force in the x direction to be equals to zero. This first equation I'm uh, writing here. So in the x direction we have only two force, this fx and this t. So fx minus t should be equal to zero and from here f will fx will be equals to t and that is equals to t we have mg h by v right so we have obtained fx now uh, to find fy we can equate the we can uh, use the condition that the net force in the y direction should be zero so here we have only two forces this fy in the upward direction mg in the downward direction so clearly we can write that fy should be equals to mg that is the vertical the vertical component of this force is balancing the weight of the lamp and the horizontal component is balancing this tension force T. So this thing we have uh, obtained from here. Now if you uh, take some uh, data here like if you take that V is 12 centimeter, H is 15 centimeter and the mass of the lamp is 2 kilogram then what are the unknowns? Unknown means that the tension force T and the force F. So tension force T, this is mg into h by v. This is what we have obtained earlier. So if you plug all these values here, you'll get the tension force T to be 24.5 Newton. And if you find Fx and Fy, Fx we have equals to uh, mg into h by v that means same as it is tension force 24.5 newton and f5 would be equal to the weight which is 19.6 newton now here also if you see that the tension force t and this force f5 is larger than the weight of the object so what we can conclude from here that the forces required for a structural object can be greater than the weight itself and this is the important consideration while designing the bridge, hanging structures and also the effect occurs in the human body also. Let's understand this by taking an example. Now here we have a hiker who has broken his forearm that you can see here and rigs a temporary sling using a cord stretching from his shoulder to his hand and the angle made by the cord with the horizontal is 40 degree. Right. Now you can consider the forearm to be uh, a forearm and the hand to be uniform and the mass is 0 point sorry 1.30 kilogram and you can take that the length of the forearm is 0 0.30 meter. Now then our task is to find two things first uh, the tension in the code tension T in the code and B, we have to find the horizontal and the vertical component of the force F exerted by the humerus. What is humerus? Humerus is the, the bone of the upper arm. This is the bone, upper arm. The force exerted by the upper arm onto the, the forearm. Here we have a bone known as ulna. So the force exerted by this, this upper bone onto the ulna is what we need to find. Okay. So, uh, we can use the same two conditions that we uh, mentioned earlier in the starting of the two video. In the starting of the video, first one we have the net torque equals to zero, and here we can take this point to be the axis of rotation. This point. So what I can write here that uh, here we have to take the this component T y. This is what T sine theta multiplied with the uh, this distance is L. And this is positive here because it, uh, the torque is in counterclockwise sense. 
then minus mg into L by 2 and this is equals to 0. Now from here we can find the value of t. This t would be equals to mg divided by 2 sin theta. Just plug all these values here to find the tension force t. You will get 9.92 Newton. Next to find the fx and f5 we can use the zero force condition. So the net force should be equals to zero in the x direction. So fx minus t cosine 40 degree. This should be equals to zero. And from here we can easily find f of x. So not f of x, fx. The, the force in the x direction. This would be equals to 7.60 Newton. Now to find f5 we can use that net force in the y direction to be equal to 0. So F y would be equals to mg minus t sin theta. Just plug all these value you will get F y to be 6.38 Newton. Now did you notice one thing that this force F this force F also makes 40 degree with the horizontal and why this is the reason is that uh, this is basically due to the, uh, the symmetricity of the figure. Here mg acts at the center of the forearm. That is why uh, the this force F also makes 40 degree with the horizontal. Now one question I'm giving to you is if the, the forearm is not uniform and the center of gravity is at this point at a distance of L by 4 from the from the elbow then in such a scenario you have to find that what is f y f x and t right now we'll be taking one more example and then we will going to end this video now we'll be considering the last example for this video and here you can see we have this 85 kg person mass for the person is given to be 85 kilogram it stands on the lightweight ladder that means you can neglect the weight of the ladder now the floor is rough and it exerts a friction force F2 onto the ladder and uh, uh, the normal force F1. Now uh, the gravity force of this person would be acting in the downward direction mg and also uh, the the wall is frictionless so it will exert only a friction force uh, only a, a normal force F3 there would be no friction force. Now for the given uh, dimensions our task is to find the force F1, F2 and F3. Okay same thing same uh, that is uh, now to solve this you can use the same uh, two conditions now let me do one thing i'll not be solving this problem in full sense i'll be just giving you the equations solve on your own so the net force the net torque sorry net torque should be equals to zero now uh, you have to think that which point you should take to be the axis of rotation so that you can simplify this problem in a easy way so pause the video and think now I hope you might have thought so you should take this point to be your axis of rotation and then if you write the net torque to be equals to 0 you will get that F3 to be equals to mg into b by a I'm just writing the result and to find the force F2 you can equate the or you can use the net force in the x direction to be 0 so f2 this would be equals to f3 and that will be equals to mg into b by a now f1 for f1 we can use that the net force in the y direction to be equals to 0 so we'll get f2 f1 to be equals to mg right now if you solve this you'll get f3 to be 115 newton so f2 is also 115 newton and f1 will be equals to 830 Newton these will be the results you can check on your own now here we sh I should discuss one important thing that the friction force this F2 is what this is a friction force which is 150 Newton and this force is provided by the surface now the surface should be rough enough to provide this much of friction onto the ladder, ladder. otherwise the ladder will slip so if you uh, solve it for uh, if you solve it for mu mu is what f the friction force f uh, 2 is 
equals to mu times the normal force which is F1 here. So if you solve it for mu from here, you'll get mu to be 0 0.18. That means this the, the coefficient of static friction should be greater than 0 0.18. Otherwise, the surface will not be able to provide this much force and the ladder will slip. And for this reason only, the the rubber pads often observed at the base of the ladder and they are supplied to enhance static friction and thereby increasing the ladder safety. So this was the observation that you must uh, see here. So with this we're going to end this video. So in the next video we'll discuss the center of mass and balance. So we'll meet in the next video. Goodbye.